If you are voting for nothing else this election, vote for your right, not a privilege, your right to keep more of your income. Today, a court decided that you shouldn't have a say in how much money the government takes from you. And I keep saying it, we fought the Revolutionary War over a 2% tax hike in a breakfast beverage, and now we willingly hand over 50% of our hard-earned dollars to the government through taxes, fees, and other stupid penalties. Our financial liberty is on the ballot in November. It's on the ballot literally, well, it's not going to be on the ballot, but it should have been on the ballot in California, where the California Supreme Court just negated a legal petition that would have given taxpayers the right to vote on any tax increase. Well, I'll get to that in a minute, but this is the choice. It's totally binary, just like gender. The, and California, look, is the litmus test for all Democrat policies. Vote Democrat in November, your taxes are going up. Vote Trump in November, they're going down. And if you don't believe me, they said this themselves. Guess what? If you elect me, I'm not going to have you. Your taxes are going to be raised, not cut. We gave you the largest tax cut in history. They want to terminate that. I want to make them permanent, and then I'm going to reduce taxes by still more. It's literally that simple, folks. And, and to the raging libs out there that I'm so tired of, it's oh, I'm willing to pay more in taxes to keep Trump out of the White House. Look, I'm glad that you're that financially secure or whatever, but most of us aren't. Biden and his administration, they want to make the tax cuts from 2017 seem like they only benefited the uber wealthy, and that's like somehow bad and therefore should be canceled, which is hilarious because Joe Biden was just on stage in California supported almost exclusively by the uber wealthy. Look, the Trump tax cuts decidedly benefited the middle class. That is based on the IRS data. It's not my opinion. It's not a partisan talking point. It did. But the party of Bidenomics and fact-checking themselves, they cannot have you believe that. So they will literally tell you a bold-faced lie. So look, uh, the, as you said, the president is going to uh, allow, uh, is going to, is, 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 is going to let the Trump tax cut expire, uh, and he was very clear, but he will not raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 uh, a year. This woman can't even look that reporter in the eye as she's speaking because she knows it's a bold-faced lie. There is no proposed tax policy by this administration right now, after the ta uh, Trump tax cuts expire, to ensure that people making under $400,000 a year won't pay more in tax. There just isn't. It's not, a, it's not a thing. Taxes on the bracket for everybody will go up. They won't tell you this, but I will. It is actually going to go up for everyone. And when it does, trust me, here's the talking points. Democrats are going to try to blame it on Republicans, but it's not Republicans' fault. Because Republicans want to renew the Trump tax cuts. Every single person in America right now, and this is, I get so angry about this, including everyone making under 400000 already got a 20% increase in their taxes via Biden's inflation because he printed a ton of money. In 2017, when Donald Trump signed those tax cuts, he brought down the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21%, and companies expanded. Yes, the top tax rate also went down from 396 to 37. It wasn't exactly a leap and bound here, which did benefit the rich. But you know what, folks? You, you know who, pay, who benefits the most from tax cuts? People who pay the most in taxes. It's basic math. Case in point, in 2019, the year after the tax cuts actually took effect, the top 1% paid $100 billion more in taxes than the entire bottom 90% combined did. How, how's that for your fair share, Joe Biden? You know, some of the lowest tax brackets got even bigger percentage tax cuts, which is why this benefited the middle class so much. It also raised the child tax credit for the middle class. It bolstered protections for retirement and education savings accounts. Just, just to name a few, you know what happened? Government revenue, i.e. the money that coming in from taxes, didn't decline at all. And the GDP went up. Every marker of the economy was stronger post-tax cuts. Everything. Everything was. They, they were charging you less money on your tax bill, and the government was still taking in more money in taxes. And this is the part that is so foreign to Democrats, because they are so economically illiterate. Taxes are a boot on the neck of the economy. When you lift that, even a little few percent, the economy takes a breath of fresh air and gets re-energized. Companies spend more money, they hire more workers, and they pay them more. And guess where that money goes? Back into the economy, not into the government.
Again, despite all this data, Democrats never consider. Never, just maybe the answer isn't raising taxes. Maybe the answer is cutting government. And I prescribe to this. This is why I'm voting for Donald Trump, because I believe I know how to spend my money better than the government does. I've laid out enough stupid things they spend money on over the last year of this show. This November, the decision is between are taxes the amount of money you allow the government to take from your paycheck, or is your paycheck the amount of money the government allows you to keep? It's that simple. And it has never been clearer than by what Gavin Newsom is doing right now in California. And don't forget, Gavin Newsom is the favored to replace Joe Biden. As soon, I mean, it could be even like by the first debate. Maybe they'll wait until the convention. But I don't think Joe Biden's going to be standing there in November. I just don't. And you want to know what Gavin Newsom is about? Folks, there was this ballot initiative that just today was struck down by the California Supreme Court that was set in place with more than double the required signatures needed, mind you, that would force any tax hike in the state to be put on a ballot for the people to vote on it before it could be instituted. I mean, no, the, the party of democracy struck that down. Gavin Newsom sued to block it, to block the people from having a say in raising taxes on them. Am I crazy? Does this sound absolutely insane? It does sound insane because it absolutely is. Gavin Newsom, the guy who turned a $100 billion surplus into a $45 billion deficit in two years. And then he goes and does this. Yeah, a high-rise building with, will be for homeless shelter in L.A., which costs taxpayers $600,000 per unit. It has a gym, it's got an art room, a music room, computer room, library, a cafe. Most of the people I know don't have this. They, and they work. They have jobs. And, and when he's confronted on why they have a deficit, he's like somehow, I don't know. His answer is not, hey, maybe we should cut the government and stop spending on money on stupid stuff. No, no, no. He would never consider that. His answer was, I don't ever want you as a taxpayer to have any say on how much I raise your taxes ever. Because, you know, he, he actually said this, that he doesn't think we understand complex issues like taxes. I, from the guy who created a deficit. And, and people in California, and this is the funniest thing. It's not even funny, it's horrible. That California Democrats, and Democrats everywhere, honestly, they just keep voting for this stuff. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. How, how bad does it have to be for you to realize that the government sucks at literally everything? Everything is the DMV. California is the perfect example of this. They have the strongest clean air regulations, most polluted air. California has the highest taxes, biggest deficit. California has the largest economy, one of the highest unemployment. California has the highest paid teachers, but one of the lowest literacy rates. California undoubtedly has the strongest gun laws, but the murders are far exceed anywhere else in the country. They spend the most on homelessness, but yet have the largest homeless population. Their freeways are just lined with tents full of drug addicts. Democrats on a national scale always say, well, if you just let us do more and do what we want, everything will be better for everybody. California has executed every, literally every liberal policy. They are universally in control, Democrats over there. They have everything. They have the world's sixth largest economy in the state of California. They have more natural resources than any other state, one of the most beautiful landscapes with, like, the best climate, and they have still somehow managed to be the worst period, last period, state period, ever period. The only thing they win on is the number of people leaving the state. California is literally the embodiment of every Democrat policy. That's what Joe Biden wants. That's what Democrats want for all of America, is what exactly what California policies are. Half of Americans are already struggling to, say, to stay where they are financially. They're treading water. Less than 10% of Americans say the financial situation is improving. That should be the election right there, 90-10. Dun, bump. It's like 500 electoral votes in Trump's favor. And, and people want to go even further than that, off that cliff, like in California? No, thank you. I will take my vote. And I will cast it for the guy who may have 34 felonies, but wants to get out of my wallet, out of my bedroom, out of my bank account, lessen my tax burden, not trans my kids, stop terrorists from coming into this country, let me have guns, drill for oil, help me afford a home, and if somebody threatens all those things, he's going to send 11 carrier battle groups to rearrange the coastline of said country. But if none of that appeals to you, <laughs> consider this. If you vote in the R column, you will pay less in taxes. If you vote in the D column, you will pay more. It's that simple in November.